Hi, it's Dwyer. It's Monday, December the 17th, 2018. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's share some post-fight thoughts on Canelo's annexation of the super middleweight title. It's his third weight class where he's picked up a title. But first, let's back up a little bit. Jamal Charlo, that's a name you need to know. He's one of the most two-handed, most explosive fighters in boxing today, and he's unbeaten. And he had a fight at middleweight, right? Key division. Planned against Willie Monroe. Well, Willie Monroe got pinched, right, for performance enhancing drugs, or at this stage, let's just call it a testosterone booster, right? He's being investigated and he had to step aside. Let me just say this first. You know, I believe that drug use is rampant in boxing, right? All you have to do is look at YouTube videos of a fighter's early fights and then look at the guy's body today, right? I'm sorry, you just don't burn that much body fat as you get older. It's ludicrous. Right, guys, you see them, they're 21, 22 year olds, they look a certain way. Then, just a few years later, they have no body fat whatsoever. Now, the pros are now in boxing. The people who can cut weight, augment your testosterone. Right, guys who have been busted in the past by authorities are now advisors to some of the top fighters, right? Don't be surprised if you don't hear bigger names than Willie Monroe's getting pinched, right? This is boxing, it's not weightlifting. In basketball, they talked to Kevin Durant. They were talking to him about LeBron James. He said, you know, LeBron works on his body, I work on my game, right, according to reports. I see a lot of guys working on their body now in boxing, <clears throat> right? Let's just say I don't quite believe it's all natural. Because when I'm here online looking at early fights and looking at the guy as an amateur, and the guy has baby fat all over the place and he's in his 20s, I just don't see how that suddenly vanishes, right? Over time where the guy looks like he has a body fat ratio of less than 2%. Well, let's, speak, let's talk about the guy who's replacing Willie Monroe in the fight. It's Matt Korobov. Now, you might know this name, right? He was giving Andy Lee all he could handle a few years ago before he got caught in the fight. Right, didn't go down, but was badly hurt on his feet. I thought the stoppage was premature. But understand, Karabov, a southpaw in the amateurs, beat Oleksandr Usyk. He beat Sergei Derevyanchenko, the guy who Danny Jacobs just beat. Right? For the record, Usyk's unbeaten as a professional. Derevchenko has only lost to Danny Jacobs. He even beat Jared Fletcher, who actually had a decent pro career. Kurobov was a world-class amateur. I know he's 35 now, but understand he's never gotten by. Never. On hand speed. Right? Or foot speed. This guy is more of a Juan Manuel Marquez type of technician. Pay close attention to the line. Obviously, he's taking the fight at the last minute, but he was scheduled to fight on the undercard. Right? The knock on Charlo, and this is the hitman, right? This isn't Jamel Charlo. This is the aggressive Charlo brother, right? Volume, power, he'll come after you. The problem, right, according to folklore, is that sometimes he gets a little reckless. 
he comes after you and the technique dips a little bit. Now this fight just got announced. I just became aware of it in the last half hour. I'm going to see what the odds are that are posted. What I want people to understand though is Karabov, who's only lost that one fight to Andy Lee, is much better than advertised. Folks, this guy is dangerous. If you believe Jamal Charlo gets a little bit ahead of himself in fights, this is exactly the kind of seasoned opponent who is going to know how to exploit that excessive exuberance. Let's talk about Canelo. Now, let me just say this, if I could ever find my notes here, right? You know, to the gamblers, let's talk about the odds. Canelo went off and put the odds you got in the comment section of this video. Canelo went off as a huge favorite, right? 10 to 1, 9 to 1. What I want people to understand is the bet we recommended here to take Rocky Fielding to win the fight at 7 or 8 to 1, depending on when you bet, hedged with the under, would have paid you more than simply taking Canelo to win the fight. Understand, Canelo, as we suspected, came in intent on collapsing the pocket. Right? Canelo wants to mix it up. He's not running. He's looking for the bigger man in the fight. You knew he was going to throw heavy punches. So the under hit, and the under you got it substantially better substantially better than minus 200, which is substantially better than minus 900 or minus 1,000, right? Understand, you could have taken the under and had exposure to Rocky Fielding to win the fight at huge odds, right? 7 to 1, 8 to 1, right? And still, with this outcome, Canelo winning by KO on the under made more money than simply taking Canelo to win the fight. So, to the gamblers, if you put down money on this fight and you remember what the odds were that you got, lay them out in the comment section of this video. If you played the percentages and took the under, hedged with fielding to win, and if you evened out the bet, in other words, rather than win a lot on fielding to win, you said, okay, I'm getting a plus 700, plus 800 endowment, right? 7 to 1, 8 to 1. Let me bet more on the under than on fielding to win. Tell us about it in the comment section of this video. Just understand, I know I'm going to get a lot of people who are going to say, Dwyer, fielding didn't win. That's fine. You actually did better than simply betting Canelo straight up if you had the hedge of the under. Let's talk about the fight now. Now understand, I know who Canelo is, right? For years, I've been here online saying Canelo is one of the hardest punchers pound for pound in boxing. Now it's obvious, right? The guy's gaining weight, jumping weight classes, and stopping guys, right? Understand, I'm aware that Canelo is a Hall of Famer. Certainly, the fact that Canelo has only one loss and has fought very high-level opposition, Mayweather, Golovkin, Amir Khan, Cotto, Trout, Lara, Miguel Vasquez, let's not forget about him, right? To me, this is the kind of resume in your 20s that puts you in the Hall of Fame, right? Canelo, box office draw, uh, forget the box office, just the boxing. The guy has beaten elite fighters. Just look at the former champions on his resume. Even the Mayweather fight has some folklore attached because one of the judges scoring the fight called the fight a draw. Right? That doesn't happen in Mayweather fights. Understand, when you're thinking about a Mayweather fight and you say, 
who's the last guy to fight Mayweather and actually get a draw on a judge's scorecard? I believe the answer would be Canelo. So even the loss helps his legacy. It reminds you that he fought Mayweather. And because of this one judge, I'm not saying I agree with the judge, but because of this one judge, many will say, oh, he held his own against Floyd, right? So let me, let me just say this. He's there. He's hunting down Rocky Fielding. There's no doubt once he starts landing. Once he starts hitting Fielding in the ribcage, that Fielding's on borrowed time, <clears throat> right? No doubt at all. But let me just say, Fielding, you need to circle this fight. <clears throat> and you need to put the fight in your category of deer caught in the headlights. Fielding is in New York City. Folks, the moment was too big for him. Rocky Fielding is not even Rocky Fielding in this fight. I didn't understand for a minute, and you comment on this in the comment section, Fielding's facial expressions when he hits the canvas, I should say when he takes a knee, right? That's what he really did. When he takes a knee and he looks at his corner, I didn't even like his facial expression. Player, this small guy is coming for your title. You've worked your whole life for this title. Don't be looking at your corner, acting like, wow, you know, this guy hits hard. Look, I, <laughs> are you here to defend your title or not? I just got the feeling the guy showed up in New York City, looked at the crowd, and was overwhelmed. Right? I think, I think he froze. I didn't even see... Fielding attempt to use his size. He's much bigger than Canelo. I'm telling you, Canelo comes out with a knee brace. You're the bigger man. Now let's say you're fighting the guy and you're surprised at his hand speed. You're surprised at his movement. The best punch in the fight is one that misses. It's Canelo on the outside quickly doing some kind of drop step move and throwing an uppercut on the inside. I was surprised by how sudden and quick that move was. Fielding, by chance, just happened to have his head a little bit off at the side so the uppercut missed. Right? But make no mistake, Canelo can move like a cat when he wants to. So you're the big guy and let's say the little guy comes out and starts hitting you and you're thinking to yourself, man, this guy's better than I thought. He hits you in your ribs and stuff. You say, man, this guy hits harder than I thought. Now I'm telling you, a lot of big men would then start to be big, right? George Foreman, guys like that would run into you, right? Lean on you. Isn't that what big men do? Remind you, hey, I'm the big guy in this fight. Turn it into a wrestling match. Right? I've even seen guys who are surprised by how good their opponent is pull what we'll call a Felix Trinidad. For those of you who remember the fight against El Faros, Fernando Vargas, right? Start throwing low blows. What the hell? What do you have to lose? You're losing the fight as it is. Right, have a punch, stray below the border, let the little guy know, hey player, you know, you want to get tough here, we'll we'll get tough. I saw none of that. Folks, I just didn't see the drive from Rocky Fielding. It was stunning. Right there, there was no fire toward Canelo. Let me also say this too. You're fighting Canelo and he's throwing shots to your side. At what point do you turn and give him a side profile? Right? He's hit you around the liver area. At, at what point do you 
try to do something to hide your body? At what point do you try to do something to make it impossible for Saul Alvarez to land that left hook to the body? Understand too, Canelo's a lot of things, but he's not defensively blessed. I know he's throwing hard punches. You got a reach advantage. At what point do you start throwing punches to the top of his head? He has his head tilted down like this, right? He's coming in small. Folks, I know he has the capability to be sudden, but understand here, most of the time he's not sudden. He's not bobbing and weaving. This isn't Joe Frazier. This isn't Jack Dempsey. No, Canelo's just walking down the big man. So at some point, after Rocky took a couple of knees, you would have thought he would have said, you know, this guy's going to never stop coming forward. How could Rocky have been surprised that Canelo was trying to collapse the pocket since that's exactly what Canelo did in his last fight against Golovkin? Did Rocky not watch that last fight? Did he think Canelo was coming to try to run away from him for 12 rounds? So I was baffled, I mean, just straight up baffled by Rocky Fielding, right? There's no urgency. There's no attempt to just run into Canelo, lower a shoulder, run into him, right? I understand Fielding doesn't have a great jab. Okay, fine. But if a guy is constantly trying to come forward, don't you have a way to walk him into punches? Let's face it, too. Fielding was so blown away by the moment, he, he couldn't even come up with a back foot game. He's just standing there with Canelo in front of him, throwing shots to his body. I'm just going to chalk this up to inexperience. I've seen other Fielding fights. Fielding's better than this. Right? He's better than this. His other loss... He was blown out in one round by Callum Smith. That fight, same thing. Fielding shows up, he's not himself. This is not the guy who beat Tyrone Zyge. He's doing next to nothing here. Canelo is Joe Obvious, right? He's coming inside, he's throwing shots to the body. Folks, you figure out the Canelo game plan in the first 10 seconds of the fight. Let me say this too. You're the bigger man. The guy has a knee brace. Don't you want to get rough and tumble with him? You might even want to try throwing him to the canvas. Don't you want to come in and clinch him just to, you know, work him over and lean on him? You don't get Rocky Fielding trying to figure out how bad Canelo's knee problem is at all. Right? He does nothing. To twist or contort Canelo. Nothing. Disappointing performance by the former champion. Now to the gamblers, let me just say this. I know right now, the world is saying, hey, Canelo's the man, right? $365 million from the zone, <laughs> right? I know Canelo's promoter, Oscar De La Hoya, correctly says that a lot of people want to fight Canelo, right? A lot of people. <laughs> Let me just say this. You're a gambler and you see all this excitement about a fighter. You know it's a bubble, don't you? Let's ask a hard question here. Why wasn't Canelo, who decimates Rocky Fielding's body, able to land body shots against Amir Khan, right? Khan's tall, Khan's slender, right? Why couldn't Canelo find Khan's body? You figure out the answer to that question, you'll know your betting strategy if Canelo gets in the ring against a mover, right? Why was Canelo unable to land? on Mayweather's body. 
right? Folks, I believe Camelo, Hall of Famer, right? I, he fights the big fights, no question about it. Let me go one step further. I was raised in New York City. I know it's hard to sell out Madison Square Garden, right? I know it's hard to sell out Madison Square Garden. Canelo did so like Jay-Z or Bruce Springsteen, right? The crowd's there for him. They're so into him that when he's giving his post-fight interview, they're hanging around. He's talking in Spanish. You hear their reaction before they even interpret it for you on the DAZN telecast, right? They're hanging around for him. He's a superstar. Make no mistake about it. Right? I recognize he's a superstar. I recognize the Hall of Fame pedigree. Understood. Understood. But I just want to make a profit. Canelo has a problem with movement. He had a potted plant here sitting in the pocket practically parallel to him, so Canelo had his choice of which hand to use in hitting Rocky Fielding in the body. He wouldn't have that if he stays at 168 against old man Jurgen Bramer. I think that's a great fight. I think Bramer, for the record, also beats Callum Smith. Against Caleb Plant, a fighter I consider to be defensively blessed. Trust me, you're not going to see Plant just standing there like a plant, giving Camel a choice of which body shot to land. And let me name another guy, and I believe this guy beats Canelo by several rounds. And that's 168-pound champion Gilberto Ramirez. Now, he fought a guy, Jesse Hart. And I know Jesse Hart's a tough opponent for Ramirez, right? He beat him the second time, but it was a tough fight. But understand, Jesse Hart is very quick on his feet, just like Ramirez is, right? Very quick on his feet, moves extremely well. I don't think that's Saul Alvarez. You saw that if Rocky Fielding had a good jab, he would have been able to exploit it against Saul Alvarez. Right, Alvarez has his head down. Alvarez doesn't have the reach advantage. Right, Alvarez is in front of him. Alvarez doesn't bounce. Right, so his head's there. Understand, Gilberto Ramirez has a great jab. So the water is dangerous at 168, right? I haven't even named DeGale and some of the other guys at 168. Uzkadegay, right? Haven't even named them. The water is deep at 168 for Canelo because he wouldn't have the reach advantage on most of the guys, right? Canelo's a guy in his 20s with a lot of power, with a lot of explosiveness. As I said, one of the hardest punchers in the sport. Very hard to land a punch on Jurgen Bramer. Right? Very hard. I understand Father Time's going to catch up with Bramer sooner or later, but as long as Father Time is outside and not inside the Bramer camp, right? I would imagine Bramer undressing Canelo. I know this is not a point of view most people talk about. Okay, fine. Just understand the odds on Canelo fights are so skewed that you're going to have betting opportunities. Let's talk about 160. In fact, I'll even limit my comment here to the zone. The Zone has an agreement right now with Demetrius Andre. You don't even have to hope that Danny Jacobs signs with The Zone. The Zone has an in-house 160-pounder who would give Canelo all he could handle. Understand, Canelo 
wins the American fight. Couldn't really touch Khan until the knockout punch. Teddy Atlas had Amir Khan winning every round of that fight before the knockout punch. Right? Now, Amir Khan doesn't have his head on a swivel, doesn't have the elusiveness, doesn't have the reach or the size of Demetrius Andre. Right? So, the Canelo crowd, the Canelo camp knows this. That's why you're hearing Canelo say, hey, I, you know, I don't know who I'm going to fight next. But, of course, Oscar De La Hoya is saying it's not going to be Danny Jacobs who was in the ring for this Canelo fight, right? The two guys are friends. You can tell Canelo comes over to him after the fight. Jacobs winks at him. Jacobs is negotiating his own TV deal, right? HBO, they're out of the business. The Zone, ESPN Plus, they're luring fighters. Fox, Al Heyman, they're luring fighters, right? Okay, great. So Danny, of course, is figuring out which media outlet's going to help his career, help him get the big fights. They asked Danny who he wanted to fight. <laughs> Danny, who always wants to fight big names, said he'd love to fight Canelo, Golovkin again. He said, we'll work down from there if they're unavailable. Right? So Danny's game. I believe that Andre, Danny, Golovkin would give Canelo all he could handle, certainly more than Rocky Fielding gave him in this fight, at 160 pounds. So let's talk about a simple truth here. I read the comments to these videos. I know people feel I'm hard on Canelo, that I'm not giving him his just due, right? That Canelo is a great fighter, that he's the man you, the public, like Canelo, like you love Anthony Joshua, right? He's a box office smash. You're watching Madison Square Garden. You knew before they told you it was standing room only that it was standing room only, right? You, you, you understood Canelo could just show up in New York City and sell out the spot, right? For the record, when Brian Jennings fought Vladimir Klitschko, that was not a sellout. This was, <laughs> right? Food for thought. But all I'm saying is, gee, folks, understand when a guy has a problem with movement. He fought Eris Landy Lara. Now, many of my longtime subscribers here contacted me privately and said, Rich, I thought he won that fight. Okay, fine. But the fight's razor close, isn't it? It's razor close. So, rumor has it the Canelo people are interested in fighting David Lemieux, right? Who supposedly was too dehydrated to make weight here, right? Understand, David Lemieux is a potted plant. He's not going to move around the rink like a Danny Jacobs, like a Demetrius Andre. Right? He's just not. Understand, Canelo could easily say, I want Golovkin again for the third fight. Right? After all, Golovkin destroyed David Lemieux. <laughs> right? Canelo's not reaching out to Golovkin right now. I know he told a reporter, oh, maybe I'll fight Golovkin next. That's not what his promoter was talking about. Right? The promoter mentions two guys. Golovkin and Danny Jacobs, it says, nah, nah, nah. <laughs> you know, we're not, we're not going to fight them, right? Understand, you're not going to hear Demetrius Andre's name either, right? I don't think you're going to hear Jamal Charlo's name because Jamal Charlo, while he stays in the pocket a bit too much to me, he's explosive. He's going to fight back. He also has a back foot game when he wants to have one, right? I think with Canelo, you need a back foot game and movement. So I'll just say A plus performance by Canelo. I can tell you I'm here watching fights at times with some great fighters. 
and my girl will see me and she, you know, will just go about her business, right? I'll have Terrence Crawford on. I'll be enjoying myself. Uh, you know, she'll see the TV. She'll just keep moving, right? Uh, the Canelo fight, I'm watching the Canelo fight. She comes in. She looks. She sees it's Canelo. She sits down, <laughs> right? She's into the fight. She's like the sellout crowd at New York City. Then, of course, I can tell you, the last time Rocky Fielding takes a knee, my girl screamed at the TV, stop the fight. Stop the fight. They have to stop it, she, she said, turning to me. Right? That's what superstars do to fans. The public's convinced. I'm just saying, Canelo now came in with a knee brace. He doesn't move that well. I thought Floyd Mayweather almost shuts him out. Right? Almost shuts him out. I can tell you, Dan Rayfield, the boxing um, writer, after six rounds, had Floyd up six rounds to none. Right? The public is thinking about the last two fights, Canelo in the pocket against Golovkin, Canelo in the pocket destroying Rocky Fielding. Right? I think you need to fade this Canelo is unbeatable narrative. Right? Understand there's a list of guys who fought Canelo. Austin Trout, Erislandy Lara, Miguel Cotto who feel the judges were a bit too generous to him. Right? Golovkin. <laughs> right? Right? The one loss could easily be, in my opinion, three or four losses. Right? I'll just say, I know people are saying, hey, you're too hard on Canelo. Understand, I just don't believe in invincibility. I believe styles make fights. Some styles are going to beat other styles, right? Aran Barkley beat Thomas the Hitman Hearns, Hall of Fame fighter, twice, right? Buster Douglas beat Mike Tyson. I look at Canelo, I see a guy in the pocket too much, coming forward too much. You never saw Canelo's back foot game this entire fight. He's too successful landing body shots. He's coming inside. He doesn't have the bob and weave of a Joe Fraser, right? You remember Joe going like this or a Mike Tyson. You remember Mike going like this, right? He's just there. That's why the Callum Smiths of the world, punchers, who feast on guys who are just there, want to fight him again, right? Food for thought. A-plus performance, let's just say styles make fights. I'm looking forward to seeing what the posted odds are if Canelo fights. A Bramer, a Plant, a Gilberto Ramirez, a Jacobs and Andrade, a Golovkin, or a Charlo. In fact, I can't even say a Charlo. I have to say Jermel Charlo, right? Because there's Jermel as well. Great fighter, Hall of Fame fighter. Not unbeatable, at least not from this seat. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.